How can Azure Arc help you manage servers that are on-prem and across other cloud platforms? Find out on this MS Cloud Bros video. Hey, I'm Jeremy Wallace, Microsoft Certified Azure Solutions Architect uh, and Microsoft Certified Trainer. And today we're going to take a look at Azure Arc Server Management. We're just going to cover some of the basics and the environment. Uh, there's definitely some more advanced capabilities that you can take a look at, uh, but we're going to take a look at some of, of what you get right off the back. So let's dive into the Azure portal and we're going to check out some Arc enabled servers. So I'm in the Azure portal, I'm on the Azure Arc page, and if I go down to Azure Arc Resources and Machines, we can see the the server that I have onboarded in here. If you haven't gone through the setup process, it's a fairly uh, straightforward process. You go to uh, add, create, and add machine, and you have the choice to run an installer on, on a specific server, or you can run a script. Even some of the newer operating systems, uh, like Windows Server 2022, uh, Data Center has a built-in wizard that you can just run uh, directly from the OS there. And it's just a step-by-step -step sign into your, your admin account that has the right permissions on the Azure subscription. So like the, the subscription, the resource group that you want to deploy this machine into as far as the ARC object that you see. And then once it's connected, you'll see it onboarded and listed in here with the ARC agent status connected. So here I'm gonna dive into my ARC enabled machine. And if you're used to managing virtual machines inside the Azure portal, you may be accustomed to a certain level of management that you would expect to see on the ARC enabled server side. Of course, you would be wrong to expect those things. The, the main reason being that Azure Virtual Machines, of course, live in Azure and have uh, the full connection to the Azure Resource Manager for the capabilities that it's able to do, like restarting, rebooting, and all of the data aspects that it's able to populate inside the management portal. Whereas with an ARC-enabled machine, you're just running an ARC agent, and that could be a physical machine, it could be a virtual uh, a, a virtual machine running on a virtualization platform. And there's uh, are ways to arc enable uh, the entire vSphere VMware environment that does give you a little bit more management capability of virtual machines, but just arc enabling inside Windows Server itself does have quite a bit of limitations if you directly compare it to the management that you get with Azure Virtual Machines. Uh, so while at face value, it may be somewhat disappointing coming into the Azure Arc management interface, there is still quite a bit of management capability that you get with Azure Arc, and we'll dive into that. When we're taking a look at my Arc enabled resource here, we do see I get the fully qualified domain name of that server, the operating system that it's running, the manufacturer model, cloud provider, and then license type, we'll touch on that a little bit here in a moment, but we can see that this specifically is retail license and I'm activated for some Azure benefits. Now, what's at, at face value here, what's some of the main things that I would typically be used to seeing with Azure Virtual Machine that I'm not seeing here? Well, one, your, your network information, you don't see the IP address of the server listed anywhere. And so that can be a bit of a letdown when you take a look at it. But again, there's still quite a bit of management capability here. So let's dive into what you do get. Now, one of the things that you can add into your, your ARC management uh, here is being able to apply things like the machine configuration. So if we take a look here at the Azure Windows baselines, uh, it's going to tell me what's in compliance and what's not in compliance uh, as far as things that I would expect to be configured on this server. So across the board, if say you have, you know, 50 servers spread out across AWS, GCP, and on-premise, this across the board is going to analyze every single one of those ARC-enabled machines and let you know, hey, how does this machine fall short of your baselines that you have set for the server? And then not only that, you have just policies in general that you may be looking for auditing certain aspects of your server setups. We can see what's compliant and not compliant in regards to these policies and how that fits in with my ARC enabled servers. And so you can go and create these custom policies based on stuff that they already have pre-configured in there and assign it. Now, also being able to deploy extensions to these servers is definitely a powerful thing. Again, maybe limited in terms of what you're thinking for as far as an Azure virtual machine. But one of the things that is definitely a huge management game is this Windows Open 
SSH. Now, if you want to add an extension, it's coming here. You choose the extension you want to deploy. But this open SSH for Windows allows you to do some direct command line control of, of these machines. So if I go to, to connect here and I run, I'm just going to choose the password method for this one. And I'm going to connect directly in the browser here. This allows me to have command line access of my server all done through a secure connection over the Arc agent that is on that particular server. All right, so now it's asking me to, to log in. So I'm gonna enter my password for this account. This is the local administrator account that's running on there. However, I could set up the SSH key-based authentication and do it that way. But just for this demonstration, I'm gonna use a local administrator account. So I am now on this server that's in my Hyper-V environment on-premise. And now I can do things like run an IP config to, to find out the NIC information that belongs to the server. I can even access PowerShell from here and run any PowerShell commandlets or scripts that I want to from here, including if I want to restart my computer. So yes, I don't have those capabilities necessarily in a button on the overview page for this Arc-enabled resource, but I do have these management capabilities when I connect to it uh, via SSH. And so if I run a, a restart computer here and then actually head over to that machine, I would see that it's rebooting. So what are some of the other things that I can do? Well, Azure Update Manager allows you to be able to, to, to one, see what updates are missing uh, from your particular servers, and then also schedule those out during service windows uh, that you want those updates to be applied. And that help, helps you be able to manage updates across your entire uh, cloud distributed environment on premise, all from the unified Azure portal. Now, inventory and change tracking, these are other great management aspect tools. Of course, they do utilize the Azure monitoring agent, AMA. So there is some cost to collecting those logs and storing them inside Azure. However, I highly recommend that. And so we can see this gives me a software inventory of software and updates that are installed on this particular server and the services that are running. Again, I don't have any management aspect of this. This gives me inventory, but I can't stop and start services directly from here. I'd have to do that from SSH. And then I have change tracking. This is gonna track the actual changes that happen on the server in the life of it being ARC enabled. So if there are any particular configurations with the computer that have changed over time, that will be recorded in here and I can see that log. So it just gives you greater transparency into your servers across all the environments that you have them ARC enabled. So we can see Windows Update service being ran and, and the state repository service and, and these different things that have changed. If there were any particular events or operations that need to record, I would see that here as well. Now, if you want to use Defender for Endpoint or Defender for Servers, as I would highly recommend as it's a great endpoint solution these days, you can utilize a Defender for Cloud subscription and protect all of your ARC-enabled servers uh, and actually do the deployment straight through uh, this ARC enablement and have Defender for Servers uh, automatically enabled on all those ARC enabled devices. Uh, so like, yeah, that's an added benefit, not a free thing. You are paying for that Defender for Cloud subscription. There are two different plans available for that. One at a lower cost, one at a higher cost. We won't dive into that on this video. But again, that is another great benefit of using Azure Arc if you're going to unify all of your servers across all your environments under Defender. And that's pretty much it for the basics of how Azure Arc can help you manage these servers that are out of Azure. If you do want to learn more about Azure in general or Azure Arc, I do encourage you to, of course, like and subscribe the MS Cloud Bros YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date of our latest videos.